question is what to be done about the devastating suspected chemical weapons attack that has happened yet again, apparently, in Syria. Dozens said to have been suffocated, many as they sat inside their homes over the weekend. There was disturbing footage and reports still coming in tonight about survivors struggling to breathe, some even foaming at the mouth and exhibiting signs of paralysis. All this makes quite a first day on the job for the brand new National Security Advisor, John Bolton, who just recently said that the international community has not done enough to deter Syrian President Assad. Bolton quite critical of President Obama's, quote, red line on Syria from several years ago, a line that was crossed by Assad and met with no U.S military action. With me now, terrific group, retired Army Brigadier General Anthony Tata. Also with me, Tom Rogan from the Washington Examiner and my colleague Juan Williams, Fox News political analyst and gentlemen, good evening to all of you tonight. Good evening. General, good evening. let me start with you. What is the appropriate response on behalf of the U.S. government now? Well, I think we should destroy everything that can deliver a chemical weapon uh, from the Syrian military, whether that's jets, helicopters, uh, artillery tubes. I, we have the capability to do that. It's time to do that. Uh, you know, President Trump had a very strong response last year. It was a year to the day almost that these chemical attacks happened this year. Right. And, you know, put to, put to rest once and for all President Obama's incompetence in foreign policy, where, you know, if you're looking for a Russia collusion, story, look no further than 2013 when President Obama condoned chemical attacks, children running through the streets, blood coming out of their nose and ears, and gave the issue to the Russians to handle, and the Russians did nothing with this, and, and also that he could get his Iran deal that now funds all of this that's happening. There's your Russia collusion yeah, you story. You have no doubt Assad did this. Is this uh, that, that's what I hear in your tone. Th th that's right. I, you know, I think we ought to destroy everything that can deliver chemical weapons uh, from the Syrian military. All right, let me come back to you in a moment here. And I want to go to Tom Rogan right now. You wrote this today in the Washington Examiner, sir. The speed of this U.S. assessment so quickly after the attack also suggests that the U.S. either tracked the ground forces or Syria helicopters slash jets that launched the weapons against Duma. I, I imagine we have that ability. But why would Assad do this now? Well, thank you for referencing that piece, Bill. I think the reason that Assad is doing it now is twofold. On the first basis, he thinks he can get away with doing it. I think there's an assessment on the part of him and Vladimir Putin that the President Trump has said he would withdraw, uh, that the United States, if it did anything, would be comparative to the last strike in March 2017. Secondly, it has military effect for him. If we take away the moral component, by, hit, by using these chemical weapons, you can essentially permeate down into basements where civilians as well as rebels are hiding. Um, but you also serve to terrorize the adversary, which is the broader rebel group we see in Idlib province in the north. It sends a very clear message that I hold the initiative and that I will do anything and everything necessary to destroy you, and no one will really do anything about it. And that's why I think the general is right that Trump has to take decisive action. What is too. your hunch? on what he does. I think he will. I think with President Macron, the French, potentially the British as well, uh, it will be a wide-ranging air campaign. I think you will see uh, include not just cruise missiles. I think you'll see B-2s and B-1s with uh, uh, fighter escorts from the French and U.S. destroying. Uh, Suggesting uh, uh, that the, the Tomahawk missiles were used a year ago. Yeah, and, no, and, I think and that was not enough. No, I think it'll be an escalation of that, uh, which you need to do if you're really taking out hardened facilities. And I, I think you will see uh, a serious degradation of uh, Syrian air capability, especially, but also command and control as it pertains to okay. chemical weapons. Uh, Juan, you wrote a piece today in The Hill, and it's titled Trump's Nest of Hawks. Now, that is based on the first day on the job for John Bolton. But Juan, when you look at the state of affairs in the world today, may maybe this president needs, needs a lot of hawks. I don't think he needs a lot of hawks. I think he needs people that put options on the table, including military options, Bill. And so you have a situation here where John Bolton comes in, and people might remember Bolton as a huge advocate of going, the U.S. going to war in the Bush administration in Iraq. But also Bolton is a guy who doesn't believe in a two-state solution. He's a guy who thinks that a preemptory strike against North Korea is a legitimate step. But I am taken by what uh, we just heard Josh say, that Basically, if we can get alliances in place, if we can work with the French, if we, the Turks are on our side in this, if we can, in fact, bring people together to say this is unacceptable behavior, then I think we can, in fact, clear out some airspace, allowing the rebels the opportunity and hope, hopefully uh, say, signal very clearly to the Russians and to the Iranians 
that we are not going to be intimidated by the fact that they are backing Bashar al-Assad. Yeah, General, do you think there is a, an opportunity here, even though Russia called this fake news earlier today, is there an opportunity to appeal to Putin where you make the Russian leader a statesman in this um, and he turns on Assad? Is that possible or is that a pipe dream? Well, I think, Bill, you know, you, Russia's already made their statement. They've already played their chips in this, uh, you know, round of poker here. Uh, you always want to exercise the elements of national power, diplomatic, information, military, and economic. And to the extent that you can bring Putin to the table, you know, it's worth a shot. But I, I really think it would just delay our response. And, and really what our national security team needs to be doing, the National Command Authority right now is developing the options that Juan talked about and, and come on strong and destroy the capability. Ability. You know, we have a national security strategy that talks about not allowing the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction and a rules-based international order uh, on the rule of law. And so those two things are paramount if we are going to, you know, live the way that uh, the United States wants to live. General, thank you for your time. Tom Rogan, thanks to you. Juan Williams, my colleague, thanks as well to you. Thank you, gentlemen.